recruiting show where I, Katrina Collier, and my great friend Audrey Knight, who's also a social recruiting specialist, chew the fat on everything to do with recruitment, social media, and uh, if we go by last week, technology fails. Um, as we discovered last week that, yes, technology is definitely disrupting HR, we hope to talk about it slightly more positively this week with Chris Long, who joins us at midnight from Sydney, Australia. Uh, he is head of sourcing, uh, currently not caffeinated, so goodness knows how this will go, but lovely to have you here, Chris. Um, Chris and I first spoke together at the Sourcing Summit in Australia as well, so I'm looking forward to this very much. So welcome, Chris. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me, eventually. Yeah, so you've oh. worked in, um, let's see, London, Switzerland, Belgium, uh, and now in Sydney. Can you give us a little background of you know, how you ended up there and all your traveling? Yes, certainly. So I started off in agency world many, many years ago. And I was part of um, a company that did an MBO. Um, and we were the first company to get on site to SAP, um, where I had my first uh, corporate gig. Uh, so once we did the MBO, I decided to carry on being on corporate um, and went through um, SAP, then GSK, um, a few of the companies that took me around Europe. Did you um, just pick all the ones that had TLAs? Like yeah, RBA? yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I love my acronyms. Do you know what I mean? I don't want don't, don't want too many long names. Um, but yeah, and then um, it literally came up. Um, I had a job opportunity in Canada and a job opportunity in Australia. Um, between me and my family, we couldn't decide which one to go for, and this is where we ended up because we kind of went, okay, whoever's going to give us the visa first, that's where we're going to go. Mm -hmm. This one came through first, and it didn't yeah. come down to the weather. Well, it was kind of <laughs> picking fair, between those two would be a no-brainer. Well, well, one was cold and one was cold, right? So I don't mind. I love skiing, but um, yeah. So then we ended up. The visa came through for Australia in about seven weeks. Um, with yeah Canada coming through in about three and a half months so yeah four and a half years later carried on contracting um and then yeah finally ended up at the RBA uh, where I've currently been for about a year now. Mm -hmm. So what have you been doing there? Um just looking at different ways of um sourcing for them they're going through a massive IT transformation at the moment um, and also HR transformation. So they're about 14 months into a two-year transformation in HR. Um, and then IT is probably a year, 18 months into their transformation. Um, so, yeah, it's been, it's been a learning curve because obviously the RBA is an institution, I suppose. Um, and, yeah, just looking at different ways of bringing on talent for them just in the IT space myself. Um, that's what I've kind of done all my career, 15 years is, now. Is it more challenging because they're quite restricted as far as allowing you access to systems and to be a bit innovative oh, because they're yeah, for sure. about security? Yeah, definitely. So, um, yeah, they are very tight on security. So uh, we don't actually have through uh, their LAN, we don't have any Twitter access or Facebook access or any social media. Uh, so I have to do a lot of my sourcing mobile. Um, so mm. I use my mobile um, to find job. people. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because well, thing, things like graph search doesn't even work on a mobile phone. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, no, it's very challenging. And, um, yeah, it took them, I think they said, three years to get LinkedIn. So, um, oh, yeah. Wow. So, yeah, it's, um, it's definitely something that's, yeah, it, it's definitely challenging, but it's, it's mm. made me think of different ways of how to source, how to pipeline, um, and how to reach out to talent um, through technology. Yeah, actually, speaking of that, I just had a call earlier, which I very nearly didn't answer because it came through as an unknown number or a silent Ooh. number, as I'd call it in Australia. Yeah. And it was because we were talking about that, weren't we, before this, while we were testing to make sure we yes. could talk. But how, <laughs> like, even stuff like that now, getting candidate response, you have to be so creative. You have to use your cell phone or your mobile phone to call them. Yeah, definitely. Well, here in Australia, we don't um, we don't necessarily have uh, withheld numbers, even agencies now, um, mm -hmm. because people just don't pick up withheld numbers anymore. 
Um, so yeah, and then if you're just a, a recruiter, just you know pitching candidates, and they're not always going to call you back, right? So yeah, here in Australia, definitely um, is something that we we don't use withheld numbers at all. So uh, hmm. so I I find with my sorry Audrey, I've just cut you off. With my friends in Australia though, they won't respond on LinkedIn. They only respond on Facebook. Yeah, they find that yeah, more that's, yeah, and the thing is, they're on, it's, it, it, LinkedIn's still quite new here. Um, it's still probably ooh, four or five years behind how you guys in the UK use it. I mean, I started right. using it a year after LinkedIn launched, so I've been on LinkedIn for quite some time. But um, here in Australia, I know for sure, some of my team don't even have 200 connections. Um, yeah. So, wow. yeah, and very, very rare do they even use it. Wow, they don't use it for sourcing at all. No, it's it's um, the, the, I've found a lot of teams aren't very proactive um here. So the ones that are proactive and will go out there and give themselves learning on social media and um different ways of sourcing, they're the ones that are you know making a difference um and and making making the deals happen and and attracting good talent. So. Of late, you've been doing lots of chats around the seven pillars of HR, which I, I certainly love, have. I love yeah. your presentation. Um, yeah. I don't know if you, you've seen it. I'm sure you've seen it, Audra. It's very cool. Um, it's on your LinkedIn profile, though, isn't it? If people want to it's see. not not yet. No, I didn't <gasps> make it live until. Um, <laughs> so I've only just finished my last presentation um, for this year uh, today. So I'll, I'll make it live on SlideShare or make it live on my profile in some way. So yeah. how did you come about your seven pillars? Um, just by looking at different departments within HR, so there's not just uh, talent acquisition, right? Within HR, there's obviously really? learning no. and development. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> learning and development. Oh <laughs> um, health and safety. Mm. Um, so there's all these different areas um, of HR that touch an organisation. Um, and I've kind of have been leveraging off that that we don't, that it's not just all about talent acquisition and every part of HR can really make a difference. Um, we can all have mini communities. We can all get technology um, to enhance how we're interacting with uh, our employees. And then obviously talent acquisition can then use that technology to then give an employer brand um, around attracting people. So that's how I, Came up with it. I don't know whether it's um, people seem to like it. Um, <laughs> it's a bit different. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So from the mind of myself, as uh, you know, Katrina, I can go off in many, many different tangents. So I think, obviously, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's um, it's it's me. I I enjoy it, and then researching the technology that's out there across mm. these seven different pillars. Um, yes, yeah. yeah, it's. it's and looking at these are definitely um, making life easier for us um, as recruiters. Yeah. yeah. And w one thing that I think um, came across even in those seven pillars was how much social does play an element on a majority of these platforms. They're mm. pulling social profiles, even in health, um, you know, like shape up, they, um, they're using social media to give you a full understanding of of an employee um, and, what, how, and how you can reach out to them. Hmm. So, yeah, very cool. Oh, sorry, I just cut you off again. Um, one of the ones I saw you mention quite lots, Textio. Yes, I do like Textio, yes. And I saw um, actually Neil Morrison from Penguin House was asking about it on Facebook as well. Um, okay. But, yeah, so what is it you like about it? I mean, I've seen some amazing results where people have slanted it and they've increased their female applications from 34% to 42% and stuff like that. So it's quite cool. Yeah, but... and, and I think that's why I like it because obviously <laughs> with the bank, we have a major um, shift. Um, someone's going berserk with a... <laughs> You're getting props down there like no one's business order. Clearly wants your phone number. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas Chris and I, nah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you can let go of the button now. It's all good. <laughs> Stuff. Uh, yeah, I think that might be Derek. Um, but no, Did so Katrina, because I'm not seeing her right now. No, she's gone. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we yeah. can hear you, great. Okay. 
but we're um, still here. But no, yeah. Textio, so like you say, so we had a massive shift within the bank. Um, we have to bring on more women um, within technology. Right. Um, and what I liked about that platform is that yeah. you can put in certain things um, and then adjust yeah. it to make it more attractive to women, um, you know, uh, for more things that you're saying um, within job ads or um, how you're communicating. It's quite cool um, and definitely makes you think on how you can reach out to different demographics. Yeah. Yeah. And what do I you think, say that... Can you still see... Can you see me yet? Can, no. You're back. Okay. I, I've just blocked that user as well. Uh, oh, my boyfriend? <laughs> yeah, 4,417 <laughs> props. So I'm sorry. I had actually tuned out there for a minute. So, oh, can I share a link to Textio? Yes. Sorry, that's really bad. I was so focused on that, I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, since I'm on my phone, I can't really see the sidebars, just so you know, Katrina. Ah, uh, okay, that's right. I am monitoring it, so I have no idea what Chris was saying. That was your job to pay attention then, because yeah, I'd yeah, tuned out. <laughs> that's what were we talking about? <laughs> you said it makes it like more attractive to women. What types of things? Um, well, it's it's their algorithms that make... So they've got this these cool little tools that um, I don't know how it's fully used. All I know is that they give you, you know, you, you can put in a statement um, and yeah. then they can change that statement to say that your statement that you've written will reach out to this demographic. Um, yeah. So to change it, uh, to reach out to a different demographic, um, that they'll give prompts um, for you to change. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. Sorry. Let me shut, turn that off. Um, it's changing the actual words. Yes. So the words might be quite, um, for you and I, might be too harsh. So yeah. we wouldn't apply because they're very masculine. So it's, it's quite, I've used it on my website. It's very cool. Yeah, I have Excellent. to check it out. That one I know about. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. So, yeah, that's probably a, a really cool tool that I'd recommend at the moment. Definitely. Yeah. What other tools do you do like right now? Um, so also um, what we're um, what we've implemented at the bank because obviously we get lots and lots of um, paper um, within the bank. So we're kind of now taking that on online. Um, and I like DocuSign, um, and the reason I like it is just. And I'm not just saying this as a product, but anything that because I know Adobe does one as well. Um, where if you're delivering. Um, say a panel report or you're delivering a bunch of resumes um, what I've found if people actually sign for something um, they're taking ownership of that and then they're also you know signing to say that they're going to action in certain times so it's helped with a response rate from hiring managers so Ooh. yeah so, so is this uh, docusign.co.uk yeah I think it is from the UK, yeah. And Adobe have oh, got one sense. too. Yeah. yeah. Ah, that's really cool. Okay, adding yeah. that link to the sign. <laughs> that's a really good idea because one of the problems, I, you know, again, I was having this conversation earlier with a client, is getting your hiring managers to respond. Yeah. You know, it's all well and good doing direct recruitment, but if you can't get your hiring managers to respond, then you, you're wasting too much time chasing them. Yeah, So definitely. if this gives them some... Yeah, so gives what you can see when they've taking ownership and stuff yeah that's it so track when they've signed for it and then when they're signing for it you can also say you have to action certain parts in three days time um yeah. and just by giving them that action to do it kind mm. of just, yeah psychology wise it um it makes them stick to what we've agreed and uh, it's all right having these uh time plans as we all do in our hiring process but no one sticks to them right um, yeah, um, well, just, life gets in the way. That's right. Um, Look at us trying to do a blab last week. <laughs> there you go. So uh, yeah, no, I, I definitely any kind of um, yeah, like I say, DocuSign or um, I do know I was just looking on Facebook while I was waiting to come on here. Adobe have got one too. Um, so yeah, that would be a, another cool tool um, I would use. Mm -hmm. Wow. What about um, your other one that you were going on about, Connectify? Why do you like Connectify? See, I'd argue the toss for that one, but you like Connectify. Oh. <laughs> why? Why? But why don't you like it? It never works as well for me as some of the others do. Okay. Okay. Um, maybe I'm just using it on a very superficial level, not delving in. Yeah, no, I mean, look, I've only trialed it. It just seems that I like the fact that it can pull social media um, profiles yeah. um, 
into um, one platform. Uh, yeah. Because what I f the thing is, when I go into an organisation, um, people and I'd love to build a platform where mm. you know, so I'll, I'll look at recruiters and they'll go onto LinkedIn and mm. then they'll come off, and then they'll go onto Facebook and then they'll yeah. come off, and then they'll go to, so they kind of go to seven different <laughs> platforms, even the database. Yeah, um, you know, and it just slows the process down. So the actual concept of um, Connector Fire, I think. Is yeah. quite cool, and like you say, there are definitely other platforms oh, out. There. Yeah, have a look at these guys actually. Hello, talent, which I'm just going to pop down there because they're looking to do what you were just talking about as well, bridging the yeah. gap of where everybody goes. You can go in there and create a free account. Wow. So they're trying to create a whole profile. Oh, okay. Oh, and they're really open to feedback as well. They're really, really cool. So I can put you in touch with the guys there if you want to trial it. Yeah, let them know where it can be improved as well. Cool. Cool. I suppose I should put a link to Connectify there as well, seeing we were talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, um, actually, I was just having a, a, a good chat with uh, Broadbean um, just on Tuesday night. Yeah. Um, and what they have with their search, um, and not many people do know what they've got with search. Um, mm. It's, yeah, quite phenomenal that you can put in a search term and it, it, it will first go through your database uh, and say, like, right, you've got um, five mm. people that match this, and then it will also go through all your social media platforms on the same search. Mm, um, yeah. Yeah, so that was quite cool. Um, mm. So they're doing quite funky stuff with search at the moment. Which is quite a change from what I always think of them as being as well. Exactly. You well, know, back in my days at Spring, it was just a distribution platform from load yeah. job on ATS or equipment database, and it spat it out on all the jobs. That's it. Yeah, that, and that, that's exactly what I thought about them mm. until Tuesday, just gone. <laughs> um, they're like, oh, we need to pitch you. I was like, no, I don't really need a job ag aggregation tool, thanks. Yeah. But that's all we do more than that. So that was my, you know, um, yeah, definitely didn't look but yeah they're definitely doing some cool and wonderful stuff so Dev, does your company oh, uh, sorry. do <laughs> distribution on social media even though your employees aren't using using it yeah so we only um distribute to linkedin um mm -hmm. so we have a, a department called in that look so we have a twitter feed um, it's a great Twitter feed. I've got to say it's probably the best out there. Um, we have one <laughs> tweet a month uh, of what the governor is saying and, and the report. So, yeah, it's really active. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so that's the only thing um, that we've got at the moment. But uh, mm. we're just in the process of trying to change that um, and trying to bring – so even – so we're allowed to post jobs automatically. We use PageUp. Um, so it does – it does link in with LinkedIn. Um, so, but that's the only thing that we do get to mm. post on. It's not, yeah, just not, not really out there socially. But I'm giving a big, um, you know, a big push to try and get that um, on board. But because if you're only going to post onto LinkedIn, you'll probably miss a whole load of people. Yeah, yeah for sure. That, you know, so few people in Australia are using it. Yeah, I'm trying to definitely. think. It's not indeed that ranks really high in Australia. There's another job board aggregator that does better, isn't there? Seek. The main, yeah, Seek. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just logical that people will go to Google and type in whatever jobs they're looking for. Yeah, definitely. It's interesting. Hannah's made a point down the side here that candidates should know about Hello Talent and Connectifier, etc. Um, proves how important social can be for them. Yeah, but on the flip side, I think recruiters should be very, very aware as well. Um, yeah. Or HR professionals. I mean, so many times I've seen, you know, someone's very professional LinkedIn and with a tool like Discoverly, suddenly I can see them on Twitter being quite unprofessional. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's like, mm, I think everyone's yeah. getting looked at now. Yeah, definitely. And, and I did a big thing on that, on how, you know, we can social profile so many people across all these different social media platforms mm. um, and all about, um, you know, talking how we can, profile them for culture fit and so forth mm. and how you would do that. Um, so it was definitely an eye-opener for the guys that were in the workshop today. Um, and they didn't even realise how much information can be gained mm. um, from social. They were like, it's yeah. a private network. No, why would, you know, my, <laughs> you, can't, you shouldn't be able to get my telephone number. I was like, well, mm. private mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So. It's, it, it's not only that, it's that people that don't even care about posting publicly. So, you know, it's obvious Twitter and LinkedIn is public, but people who post publicly on Facebook and then just don't care. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but that's still going to keep popping up. All those two trillion posts can be searched. For sure. So yeah. it's quite revealing. Definitely. Can you search people that are posting if it's just friends of friends? No. No, only, only public. Yeah. Thank God. Like my mother was was public and she just had no idea. So I think yeah. some people just don't realize that. Yeah. But it's the comments your friends make. So one of my friends posted quite publicly something about not eating a ham sandwich on the train. Um, <laughs> and there was a whole cultural religious element to it. I'm trying to be PC because I'm getting recorded. Um, and I wanted to make a comment, which wasn't at all bigotry, but it was just I wanted to be really honest. And I had to go, but it's a public post. I can't do that. And then I was saying to him, all your friends are making comments. So you're actually exposing all your friends as well. Yeah. So he, he did change it to a private. But I think it's that thing that, you know, if you're going to post publicly, think about what you're posting and then make sure your future post is just to your friends. Because yeah. you could do it from a branding point of view. You know, the notes is quite cool on there now. They're like the mini blogs. Yeah, that's <laughs> neat. I wonder if that's going to take yeah. off. I don't know. I did write a blog on it, didn't I? I'll dig that up for you. We're doing the next question. <laughs> I like that's how I heard about it. Sorry? Well, I, that... I was just going to say that's how I heard about that. Notes is your blog. Oh, yeah, that's right. God, I haven't written a blog for ages. It's a whole month. What am I doing? I need, <laughs> wow. I need Hannah's dedication. That's what I need. <laughs> You're too busy for You've been traveling. I know. Been... Yeah. Where am I? Not sure. <laughs> I'm in Cardiff next week. <laughs> That's a big come down from Singapore, right? <laughs> oh, don't tell my client. I'll be offended. <laughs> I think people don't pay attention to whether their status is public or to their friends on Facebook. No, you're absolutely right, Hannah. They don't. It's quite scary. I think the thing is with that, I think when you're signing up for all these platforms, you're just mm. pressing yes to everything to get mm. through to the platform. And what you're signing mm. up to is making everything public. Um, yeah. And then you never go and correct it. Mm. So, yeah, I think that's a big thing. And what we were talking about, how many now sites that you can sign into with Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter mm. um, that gives access to your public profile? Well, mm. so last week I was, um, as we know, in Singapore, training the Singapore government, which was very, very cool. And they have an apply by Facebook button as well, which I thought was quite interesting because you think, oh, government, they'd be a bit more restricted. But they have full access and fly by Facebook. I'd be quite worried about what could be seen. Yeah, that's interesting. Wow. I can't, yeah, I don't think people in the US would be using that very much. Yeah. Mind you, it's my network has become very diluted because of the people in the US. So there's a lot more business going on in my Facebook feed because of that. Um, Skip's written a great comment here. And thank you for your tweets, by the way. I have seen them. Um, or people still think Facebook or Twitter posts are not an employer's business. Well, unfortunately, they are. Um, yeah. But it, I think it goes the other way. I, I think job seekers now are assessing employers and going, yeah, I'm not working for them as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. And I think that was um, brought up, especially in my workshop today, where I would say... 70% mm. of the companies weren't on Twitter, they weren't on Facebook, um, and it was, kind of, I don't know whether it's, it is um, this, but uh, those 70% mm. were having problem attracting, uh, attracting candidates. Um, mm. They just couldn't get the buy-in. Um, and one of them said they were spending $45,000 on headhunters. And I was like, mm. what? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, oh my for gosh. a commercial manager, it was unbelievable. I didn't oh my God. know that. Yeah. So that is not good. No. Do you think that's going to change going forward? That these companies in two or three years are going to all have Twitter accounts, or no? Um, I don't know because I don't know. I think it's sometimes it's so with the RBA. I mean, yeah, they've got a Twitter account, um, but they haven't. Um, and maybe some of the so there was a medical profession. I don't think they'll they'll go onto Twitter. It's just unless they get a new CEO that's going to start thinking a bit different. Um, especially with a lot of the companies in Australia, um, the head guys Am I back? Uh, are, are around for mm. a lot of years. Like my my boss at the RBA has been mm. there for seven years. You know, how do you <laughs> change the mindset? 
Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I think the change will only come once. Can you see me? Can you? Oh my god, yeah. what happened? <laughs> I don't know. Oh. It, 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 yeah, but it seems like lately it's getting more buggy. No. Yeah, I mean, I had to kick you both off because I was frozen and then pull you back in. So, oh, but I did it really quickly as soon as I realized I was gone. So, what a loud keyboard, Katrina. <laughs> <laughs> it is quite a loud keyboard, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry, it was cheap. It's just oh, a microphone one, really and I use a Mac. <laughs> oh, am I loud as well? Am I loud as well, no. Skip? Probably. <laughs> no? Oh, my God. Yeah. I, this is Jackie Clayton's fault, the pink headset. So Cute. Cute. No, I don't think so. Yeah. I, th I can hear myself echoing because you haven't got your headset on, though. I'll tell you off next week. Um, <laughs> so what were we talking about? No idea. Yeah. It's gone. Where were we? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Facebook and oh, if companies were going to go onto Twitter, yeah. I, so I, I think that change will only occur in certain organisations once you have a change of leadership. Um, mm. I think trying to change a mindset that's that knows no different within a company, and, and that's quite a, a lot of companies um, over this way. Um, mm. It's it's definitely a hard sell, but if you could do it, then I think you make a lot of money out this way. But I also think it's this stupid thing of, you know, I'm not going to tweet with the Reserve Bank. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not interested. I'll tweet with you because you're a human being. Yeah. I'm not going to tweet with a logo, you know, unless you're Apple or somebody that I know. Um, actually, I will tweet with Uber because they're amazing. But um, <laughs> a little love, a little crush on Uber. But, you know, in general, unless it's a household name, brand, you, you're not going to tweet with them. Yeah. So the rec yeah. And, and recruitment's person to person. I think I've said this on every blab, like, I, I just wouldn't. So uh, I think it's kind of crazy, and I think recruiters can just get on there and start being themselves and making the connections and just showing that it works without needing to be formal corporate. Just be themselves. You are, yeah. Yourself on the phone. Yep. Yourself. But what about people that are searching for jobs on Twitter? I mean, that's one reason to have at least some jobs on there. Yeah, but if you are yourself and you're showing that you're knowledgeable and you're sharing really good content and then occasionally put a job out, that's okay. But I don't think anyone's going to follow Reserve Bank's Twitter feed of jobs. No, no but they're right. certainly searching for a job and it come up because it's hashtagged, right? Yeah, but the recruiter had hashtag it, right? Yeah. Oh, I believe is Twitter need to develop brand development strategy and which will ultimately impact its popularity over Facebook. Wow. Oh, I don't think. Oh, I don't think Twitter is ever going to beat Facebook. Yeah, no. one point five five billion Facebook users to three hundred and twenty million Twitter users. No, and yeah, absolutely yeah. not used in Singapore, not used in Romania. Like the places I've been going to, and because I love it, as we all know. It's like, mm -hmm. Do you think that will change, and they'll start picking it up other countries? Hmm? Some countries just seem really close to it. Yeah. In Singapore, they were just like, glaze. <laughs> just not. But Instagram, all over Instagram, every single one of them. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Just, yeah. Bizarre. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, the, I was just going to say, how's the Twitter usage in Australia? I so should know, having just been there, but I don't. <laughs> um, no, I think it's definitely something that's on the up here in Australia. Um, yeah. Again, we're behind. Um, yeah. But I think the thing that's been the, the main thing what what Twitter's being used for here, especially with recruiters, is literally for jobs. Um, which as you um, said, that, that's not gonna work, right? Um, people don't wanna look at just a whole feed of jobs, but that's pretty much what the recruiters are doing here. It's, and that's yeah. what they think they're gonna use it for. Yeah. Um, so um who is twenty four seven London? Does that person have a name? See, again, I like interacting with a human being. Um, what about newer social channels like Snapchat and Periscope? So I have seen Snapchat used quite innovatively 
mm-hmm. as far as in, in, like looking for engineers within certain areas, like by Snapchat themselves. But I don't, haven't seen anybody else particularly using it well. And Periscope, I've only again only seen that used at conferences to stream. Yeah. Audrey, you need to come forward. You've gone blurry. Oh. <laughs> um, Periscope, I feel like it's gonna might take off a bit. Did you see? Um, I think it was Hootsuite and um. That's Hollywood right. Follow the sun. Follow the sun. Really yeah. Cool. It no, was really tell cool. Fill yeah. me in. I don't know about it. It was so neat. They had um employees all around the world. Yeah. Um, they had like one hour each, and they went all around the world to show what it was like to work in the company. Oh, and wow. Had, you know, in, on yeah. Periscope. There's some good blogs about it if you just um, type in follow Periscope, the sun. Periscope, Hootsuite. Yeah. Follow, yeah. follow the sun. Yeah. yeah. It was um, earlier this year, but it was really neat. Like just yeah. one employee would spend an hour talking about, you know, what it was like to work there, what this office was about, and then they go to the next location, and it was really cool. Yeah. Ah. Good like, employee branding. I like I that. Might pick that up. Yeah. Have you seen any other companies do things like that, Chris? Um, I haven't, but then I think definitely like Snapchat and Periscope, um, I think they're yeah. quite new and people are just trialing them. Um, yeah. I did see a graduate campaign done on Snapchat, um, oh. which was quite cool. Uh, they did it over 12 Snapchats. <laughs> it's Hussein. We're talking to Hussein. <laughs> <laughs> um, but where they did, you, you know, they told the story um, yeah. of graduates and then the 12th snapchat was the apply button um hmm. so that's kind of cool um and i Who think it does re- um i couldn't i can't remember i'll have to probably post it afterwards um it's on my facebook i did um i did post it up there a while ago so hmm. but yeah so that's probably the only thing i've seen on snapchat i just think people are trialing these things you know hmm. in-house first um hmm. yeah but i Chris, haven't went to it do you use Facebook for just um, like friends, or is it quite a lot of business as well? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> what does that mean? Um, so I use it's Facebook. It's a self-promotional mainly. feed. That's what his feed is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I. So where were Facebook. you last week, and who were you with? Let's guess. Mm. <laughs> Bill and Shane. 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 <laughs> I think I would I do the got same. some swag as well. <laughs> yeah, he was showing off other people's swag, not my swag, so I wasn't happy with him. <laughs> you haven't given me any swag, swag. Gina? I will do. You watch this space. <laughs> not like but, uh, you, you're advertising down there. I can see it. Sharing is caring. <laughs> yep. But, <laughs> I, I did notice that, yes. Um, <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, I use Facebook mainly because I find LinkedIn is so noisy for me. Um, yeah. I mean, I've got quite a lot of connections on there. That mm-hmm. I am, but I only connect with people that I want to listen to. So obviously, I'm like connected with you guys. I'm connected mm-hmm. with Schmidt, Stacy. So, and I find that I can follow what they're posting um, yeah. easier in Facebook because I don't yeah. have that many connections, and I never will. Um, mm-hmm. It'll just be I'll keep it to my friends and family, and then obviously mm-hmm. the people that I want to listen to professionally. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's how I use Facebook. What I love about Facebook as well is um, the groups are amazing. I mm-hmm. mean, I know you guys know, but also the ability to save links so easily. It's yeah. like Facebook are doing everything in their power to keep you on there. So I'm forever saving posts and links so I can come back to them. Like you were just talking about, I wish I'd saved the Snapchat one when it passed through. But it's yeah. so easy to go back and find stuff. Yeah. How do you save links? How do you mean? Oh, well, I use it on the desktop a lot. So there's a little button. I don't know if it's on the mobile. If I'm honest. I've never no, seen I don't it. think it is on the mobile. I don't know because um, I use the at the risk app. of opening Facebook on the, in the middle of a blab. <laughs> <laughs> but I save links all the time. It's under the drop down. Oh, oh yeah, it is. So yeah, there's that's. I doubt you can see it, but there's a, a save post button there, oh. or it'll say save link. Um, well, that's nice. I can't believe I didn't know about that because I would use that a lot. Well, yeah. I mean, that's my thing. I, I don't understand when, you know, Facebook isn't making money from the users, mm-hmm. and, but it's yeah. doing everything in its power to keep us on there and using it. It's like they should go and teach LinkedIn that, and then LinkedIn would remain valuable as a recruiting tool because nobody's yeah. staying on there because they, they just removed the ability to save profiles and tag profiles. So I'm really going, why am I paying? Oh, like, wow. Why am I paying? You can't yeah. tag your friends? 
you can't you can't save profiles anymore. So one of the benefits of having a premium account used to be you could save second and third level profiles and mm -hmm. tag them. So I could go, you know, here's all just social recruiting, here's sourcing over here, here's this. So at least you and you could write notes as to why you you know sent someone a message and things like that. So yes. we've got a question over here from Elzesh. I sent a client of mine in brackets for my other company a presentation and stats how well her ad did on our social media accounts and she pointed out that it was so great to see that blurb that we put down for her company instead of just saying job blah 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 so i agree that it's important to take a few seconds to write extra to write something nice and sell it yes definitely <laughs> actually did you see cash's post that was just going around where she looked she showed really cheekily an advertisement for coke and then the description uh, of coke oh, yeah. so clever very cool. Yeah. I'll add that there while you guys are chit-chatting. <laughs> yeah, over here, yes. job descriptions are still generally really boring and horrible. Is it the same where you guys are? Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, they are, yeah, definitely. They, and I, don't, I think if you, you know, if, if you can definitely become more creative in that space, um, it would be a lot better, especially for someone like the RBA um, that could maybe instead of just having a job description as a, an ad, then I think they could definitely move forward. Well, yeah, and also it's, um, I loved um, Jim Stroud's post, and I think I mentioned that last blood, blood before, about how he's talking about show the career progression, because it's a job seeker's market mm. as well. Oh, so, okay. it's, well, yeah, it's like, it's not about what you want, it's about what they want. Yeah, yeah. and they say millennials are really, in, you know, into... How they how they can move up and forward and did she just say the M word? Yeah. Right. Technically, I'm a millennial. Pure Research has decided I'm a millennial. I'm actually also unemployable, uh, to be fair. But I also I would also want to know that I was going to be invested with and how I'm going to be able to like pay it forward and get it back. And I think that sense of purpose is now really important to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, you're right. It, it is quite scary that under what is it half the population of the world will be under 30 in five years oh i feel old yeah. <laughs> chris feels ancient yeah definitely <laughs> Ouch. Isn't it? Yeah. What? oh god it's because we know each other too well right yeah. so so what is your favorite next up up and coming piece of technology seeing that's what our topic's meant to be what um, do you think is coming Look, I think I like higher view um, or any video because um, I think video is going to be quite um, a growth platform. We're using, we just started using it at the RBA. Uh, yeah. We just used it for our grads um, for interviewing. It's cut down interviewing process time. Mm. Um, higher view do quite a few cool tools on their platform as well. Yeah. Um, so I think. Like what? Well, just uh, but what I would like to see, let's, put, let's say what I'd like to see. I'd like to see them humanise it more. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, no. What do you mean? No. <laughs> <laughs> that, this is a little joke between me and Katrina. <laughs> and I've said it once and that's, yes. Um, so, no, I'd just like to see it more um, from... I actually didn't know what you meant. <laughs> from a humanization aspect, because a lot of these platforms are still very clunky. They're still yeah. um, they're not great for the user. Um, they've got the back end right for us mm. who are assessing. Um, I'd just like to see them take it to the next level. Um, I don't know how that would be, um, but yeah, I'd definitely like to see them. Yeah, mm. maybe given a face and. Um, so people are feeling a bit more at ease because obviously it's quite a new way of interviewing. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. People are finding it a little bit um, off-putting, I suppose. Sorry, I was looking at this massive spider that's just coming up beside me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I no longer live in Australia. <laughs> it's huge. Is it a huntsman? Yeah. Oh, huntsmen's are awesome. Audra. Yeah, they're like, good. They're yeah, we don't mind them. Yeah, and the body is about this big, and the the span is oh, they're great, and they're brown and they're furry, and they're completely harmless. Yeah, they are, but they're huge, yeah. quick, and they jump at you. They do mm. not jump at you. Yeah, they do jump oh at you. God. I swear. So going back to video, yeah. sorry about the spider. I'm yeah. sure he's beautiful though. Um, <laughs> my only concern is when people try and use it for niche, 
so it's great to use as a graduate, high volume, you know, yep. retail, that kind of thing. But you can't expect people that are highly sought after to do video interviews. I, okay. I mean, yes, if you're just Skyping in, but to yep. actually send them a link, follow the link, pre-record. Yeah, I, I yeah probably. I wouldn't send it to the like, solution architects or anything yeah. at that level. Um, yeah. But I think for the developers, definitely um, to nut out people's um, technical skills. Mm. Um, so we use it. I got um, all the hiring managers. Um, mm. They give me a list of five questions. And yeah. then we got them all together to say, right, what's the best five questions and, and mm. what's the outcome? Yeah. Um, because then as we sat down, then we could rate them. Right. Um, as a group, and we knew each five of the five questions what we were rating against. So then we kind of tried to make it that it was fair to everyone instead of someone just looking at it and rating it the way that they would. So okay. we kind of put that in. Um, so yeah. That's quite yeah. cool. I'd also like to see an assessment tool somewhere um, for yeah. when people are actually applying for your job. Um, that's what I'd like to see. What do you mean? We're trying to... So, i.e., again, very technical roles. I'd like to, um, I'd like to be able to assess quite quickly um, if they do actually have. Uh, so, if they've got, say, ten years of Java experience, how could I measure that um, on an application mm. form or a, a, a quick way of assessing? I don't know if that's possible, but definitely. For oh, a, well, the thing, I know someone a, put you in touch with actually, so I oh, know okay. who's developing something like that who'd love your input on that. So yeah, def, well, you, yeah, and you, just when you've got two hundred and fifty applications for one job, because with being the RBA, you do get quite a lot of applications to a job. Well, even for developers who are in yeah, short supply. That that was my last um, wow. yeah reply to Java developers. Yeah. Wow, yeah. I, I'm stunned at that because it's so hard to yeah. recruit over here. Yeah. So, it must be a really great brand. Yeah, they, they have got a great brand, I've got to say. Um, and especially with the NPP project that we've got going on in Australia, which is a new payment platform, everyone wants to be part of it. Okay. So, yeah. So we literally could put an ad out and fill all our jobs that way. Um, mm. But we, we, we are trying to – I mean, we do a lot of CV mining, you know, data mining across Seek. Mm. Indeed, uh, we've just signed up to those, which took mm. ages to get approval for. So. <laughs> Yeah, at least at least we're trying to be proactive. Yeah. yeah. So in our last couple of minutes, yeah, you you've got a little side project, haven't you? A bit of sourcing as a service going on. What's that all about? Oh, so Give yourself a little plug. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, sourcing as a service really is. Well, what can I say? It's it's, a bit of a, it's, it's software, right? It is. Yeah. It's sourcing using software. Yeah. Um, and how we. And also not software as well. You know, I've got an outsourcing piece mm. that we can do. Um, so it's definitely, yeah, it's it's a, it's in its infancy at the moment. So yeah. I'm just trialing a lot of different um, technologies, mm. a lot of different offshoring places. So like India, Philippines, Bulgaria. Um, so yeah, and seeing who's receptive to training. Um, and getting more social, but it's all it's all around uh, social yeah. um, and sourcing, really. So yeah, sourcing as a service, SaaS. It's very cool. Yeah. Mm. Liking it. So yeah. Have you got any final questions for Chris, Audra? Uh, is, well, is there anything else in two thousand sixteen that you think is just going to take off? Um, like you said, video. Ooh, um, I think. Well, very much um, the open source technology is going to take off for sure. Um, I think it already is there. And I think with more and more people climbing on board, um, yeah, I think that's that's going to be. And I like it as well. I like the fact that you can share. Sharing is caring, um, as my mother would say. Yeah. So, yeah, I think open source technology, yes, you know, especially like around training and development. So you and me and uh, places like that. I think that will um, that'll be a great platform. Uh, and LMS, I think LMS is going to see a bit of a, a resurgence in 2016. Right. Hmm. Cool. Yeah. Do we know who's coming up next before we thank Chris for his time? Um, it's 
It's a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> Audra and I really need more time in the day, don't we? So we will definitely be returning to our usual Friday, 3 p.m. I can't remember, 10 a.m. for you, isn't it? 10 a.m. East Coast US, 3 p.m. for me. Um, Chris, thank you so much for signing in at midnight. You must be ready. For no that. worries. Wow. Thank you for having me. <laughs> cool. Thank you, Chris. Thanks again for all of your insight. And uh, we will let you know soon who's coming on the show next week. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Thank Bye.